بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والا أما بعد الحمد لله we're continuing with these life advices from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and every single one of these advices from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we look at them they are things that you realize that there's two systems in this world one is the external material way of getting something and the other is what we call ghaybi nizam it is an unseen system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we cannot fathom and we cannot understand through material means, through rational or through logical. This is something beyond the capacity of human intellect. And this is the system by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. So there's an unseen system in this world that is working that... If any and all these things that we see and we discuss in making wealth or in living long or in getting happiness and in getting success, we know that there is a worldly means of doing this. There's worldly asbab. That if I get this much money and if I live long and if I you know, do this, that and the other, I'm going to be happy. If I do this, I'm going to become wealthy. If I do this, I'm going to be successful. These are all the material means. But there is an unseen and this is what the Prophets والسلام, came with. That unseen realm, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Which in the first surah after Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, in the first section it says, who are the believers? Those who believe in this unseen. And you know, we, we many, many times, many of us has, have heard of this system. They call it instant karma. You guys seen those? The instant karma videos? Right? Where somebody does something immediately, it comes back at them. This is a system. It's not just about a material world. That if I, you know, do this, and if I work, and if I, you know, do these type of material asbab, use the, the, the means of the worldly system, then I'm going to become happy, and I will live long, and I will get this, and I will get that, and I will get that. There's a completely different system which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has told us that this also we have to take into consideration. It's the divine system. So I'll give you an example. This next hadith, everybody would want this. How to increase life. Everybody in this world, they want these two things. To live long and to be rich. Anybody in this room doesn't want that? I think everybody, most people in the world, these are the two things that they want the most. To live long and to become rich. And this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ actually tells you how to get that. This is a real life hack. It really hacks into life. And if you look at people, whatever they're doing, their diets that they go on, and the habits that they try to do, and the different exercises that people do, and going to gyms, and doing all of these different things that they do, it's specifically for this. Every new video and every new fad, whether cryptocurrency or you know, investing in the stock market or doing this, everybody's doing it to do what? To earn more money and to live longer. Everything that you see, these are the two main things people want. What can I do to live longer? What can I do to make more money? That's, that's all people think about day and night. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he tells you from the unseen world, from the unseen system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that system that people don't know about. This is yu'minuna bil ghayb. And when, you know, when they interview, they said, you know, we interview so many people who are... 90 and above, who are 80 and above, what is their common thing? You know, what oil did you use in your food, ma'am? Which vegetables did you eat? You know, what is your diet? They don't ask the other question. What was your amal in your life? What were your deeds in your life? How did you treat people? How were you with your relatives? How were you with your parents? These questions they don't ask. They think everything has to do with what food you ate and what oil you put inside your food. And which vitamins you took? And how much did you exercise? And what type of water did you drink? Maybe you're drinking Fiji water. Or Avion water. This is why you live so long. There's something, my brothers and sisters, there's something beyond that. 
beyond the material world. And this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, this life advice, inshallah, if we do it, we will be, have an advantage over those people who may have all the material gain, but they don't have the prophetic teachings. An Anas radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ahabba an yabusuta lahu fi rizqih, wa yunsa'u lahu fi atharih, fal yasil rahimahu. Subhanallah. He who wishes that his provisions and his wealth should become blessed. He who wishes that he should have barakah in his wealth, that he should, his, his wealth and his sustenance should become ample. His sustenance should become abundant. And he wishes that his life be blessed and that he lives long. Then let him join his family ties. Let him be good to his relatives. Let him be good to his parents. This is the thing that if you do it, it will bless you in your wealth and it will bless you in your health and in your life. This is something ajeeb. Many of the people that I've interviewed, 80 years and above. Wallahi, I've interviewed a couple of 80-year-old people. 80 is an 80 year and above. Do you know what's the common thing that they told? He said, we had the dua of our parents. One elderly woman, woman, I interviewed her. She's above 80 years old. So she told me a story. She said that her father was taken out of the house of her other siblings at his age when he had become sick. So the other siblings said, we can't take, of our, take care of our father at this age. So they said, sorry, we can't do it. So this sibling, who's now 80-something, close to 90 years old, very blessed life, said, I took in my father in the last stages of his life. And I would make his bed every day. And sometimes he would make his bed unclean. And I would clean the sheets every single day. And I would change the sheets and I would put new sheets. And it was in that moment that my father said, Oh my daughter, may Allah bless you in your life. May Allah put barakah in your life that you've taken care of me when everybody took me out. That you honor me in this situation when everybody has rejected me. And he said all he would do is close his eyes and tears would come and he would just continue to make dua. So even she said to me, she said, I don't know, but I think it might be the effect of that. And many other people, my shaykh, rahimahullah, who lived 87 years, 90 years, he said, this is how I, respect, I, I was taking care of all of my elders. Any elders that I saw in our family, I would honor them and I would respect them. All of the elders that we've been, all of my, our shuyukh who lived 80 or 90 and above, we asked all of them. And this is the one common thing that all of them had, that they honored their parents, they got the du'as of their parents, and they got the du'as of their relatives. Despite the fact that relatives may have cut off from them, they did not cut off from them. What is the meaning of this, my dear brothers and sisters? Why? They say this is connected with the rahim. The rahim is the womb. We all came from the womb of our mothers. And anything which is connected to the womb, it is the womb that nurtured us. It is that womb of our mother that nurtured us. And we are connected to our relatives by that womb. It's called rahim. And rahim, the source of rahim is rahmah of Allah. Just like the child when it is in the womb of the mother, the child becomes nurtured by that womb. The child is fed by that womb. The child is taken care of by that womb. The child is nourished by that womb. The womb is like, subhanAllah, a mercy, a manifestation of Allah Ta'ala's mercy. So when we are honoring our relatives, we are honoring actually where we came from. Why do we honor our relatives? Because they're connected to our mother. Why do we re respect our uncles and aunts and those people that are... Because we're all connected by that womb, that rahim. And the rahim is what gave us life. So when you honor the source of your life, Allah gives you life. Where did we come from? We came from that rahim. When you honor that rahim, and everyone connected with that rahim, you're honoring where you came from, your origin. So the one, and Allah Ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful to me, I will increase you. When you are grateful for the life that Allah gave you, Allah will increase you in life. When you are grateful for the source of your existence, Allah will increase your existence. So this is a way, my dear brothers and sisters, 
have a connection and get the du'as of your parents. Subhanallah, on the opposite hand, I have seen people, my dear brothers and sisters, who have gotten the curses of their parents. Wallahi, they may live 70 years, 40, 50 years of that, they will be in jail. A person I know who has nothing but curses. Subhanallah, lived probably 30 years of his life, you know, of his 50-year life, 30 years of that was in prison. How is that barakah in life? If you really look at it, he only lives 10, 15 years. Because most of his life was spent, where? In a place that can, there can be no barakah in your life there. All of this is what? All of this is through the badduas. All of this is through the mistreatment of cutting off. And this is becoming, this is becoming something normal. We say, cut off from these people. He didn't come to my cousin's birthday. Cut off from these people. They didn't do this. Cut off from these people. Cutting off is like, a, like showing that this is how powerful I am. My dear brothers and sisters, cutting off from your relatives is showing how weak you are. Cutting off from your relatives is showing how much we dishonor this great thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to connect as much as you can. Try to connect as much as you can. This is what shows the qudra. This is what shows power. And this is what will put barakah and blessings inside of your life. When we join that rahim. When we join that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we don't understand what we are actually doing when we cut off. When we are cutting off the rahim, we're cutting off our own life. When we cut off from our relatives, we're cutting off the barakah from our lives. When we teach our children cut off, we're teaching them cut off your own blessing. Cut off your own barakah. This is what we are actually doing. And when we join that, we are extending our life, we are extending our risk and the blessings in our risk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand what has been said.